Besides uh, succession events, another way that you can uh, change the biodiversity or increase the biodiversity of an ecosystem is what they call the edge effect. This is very interesting that um, if you look at the borders of an ecosystem, it tends to be a lot more interesting, a lot more biodiversity. So even if you look at just our school right now, there's not too much growing around, but if you want to find something, go along to the fence line uh, where it borders the streets and other places, and that's where you really see interesting change occurring. So the edge effect is juxtaposition, which means side by side of two different ecosystems, and where the two meet is where really interesting biodiversity starts to happen. Uh, there's two ways that you can create an edge effect. One is induced, that means hey, us, humans go ahead and doing things. So let's suppose you have a forest and you go ahead and do a, a straight line clear cut there because you want to put in oh, telephone poles running through it. You tend to find interesting diversity that, um, and uh, biodiversity that takes place in that path that you cut right in the middle of the forest. Or it could be inherent. That is, it could just happen by some sort of natural effect. You could have a a landslide come down there and mow down the same amount of trees and open up an area there. Uh, but if you look like um, what's going on in South America right now, so they're unfortunately mowing down a lot of the, um, the Amazon rainforest there, which, which is bad for many, many reasons. But where they're opening up areas there, um, things can start growing and living there that never were there before. Same thing happens, for example, in climate change. If you look at Greenland, a lot of the melt, the ice is melting and it's exposing fresh areas which uh, are the edge effect and things are starting to, to happen there. Uh, so what are the advantages? So there, there are some advantages too, right? So uh, obviously if you have a big forest and you mow down an area there on the side there, you're creating light. And we know that plants like light. So if you look at a redwood forest, which is very dense, um, yeah, there's a lot of trees, but there's not much growing there on the bottom. But if you were to cut down a whole bunch of the trees, all of a sudden, those guys would have a chance. Uh, it's very easy for animals to move around. Uh, if you were an animal living in a forest, very dense forest, hard to move around, but it'd uh, be easier for you to get from one side to another by going along the perimeters. And so you get an increase in biodiversity, right, which happens along the edge. Uh, but of course, there's disadvantages. So what are the disadvantages, right? Well... You better be careful if you go to the edge there because that's where the big predators are also waiting for you. They're waiting for that bunny to pop out. So um, I take my dog walking every morning and uh, we're right on the edge of a park. And uh, you can see my dog knows that those bunnies are going to pop out their heads from the bushes there into the clear area. And that's when she starts running after them. So they better watch out. Uh, you also get bad stuff that moves in there, parasites, and you get a lot of competition for food that happens there. And so what happens, the net effect in an edge, is that going from your biodiversity, which you calculated, say, from the Simpson equation, all of a sudden starts to change. You don't have that normal distribution before. Okay, um, now what do humans do in these sort of situations? Well, we do something called passages, passages. And so if you have two ecosystems where you've cut a border in between an edge, so in order to get animals not to worry about that, what uh, humans will typically do is they'll put some sort of passageway, like a salmon run or something like that. So a passage which allows the animals to travel from uh, ecosystem to ecosystem without going through the edge. And you see this in parks, for example. So we see that in parks, bird populations tend to be much greater than in the forest, right? And uh, again, I gave you the example of the Amazon rainforest, which is being cleared. And then you have a lot of non-forest species that come in there.